Hello folks, Paul here, UK Rails and More. Thought I'd uh, just bring you back for a bit of an update, really. Uh, so it'll be quite a short video, this, but just, uh, well, to ask your opinion and uh, just to let you know about a couple of new ideas I've got uh, since the last few videos. Um, basically, um, for anyone who's watched previous videos, uh, you'll be aware that I was going to have uh, some kind of a building here, so say houses or shops or something, and then around the back there I was going to have some kind of... Um, tourist information hub really I suppose or little cafe uh, that kind of thing as part of a uh, feature of the two parts of this viaduct uh, obviously that one's going to be a road going through but the reason I came up with this idea was because as part of the physical structure of the viaduct itself behind there so you wouldn't get a clear uh, through view um, so I thought a good idea would be to put some kind of business in there um, potentially just to uh, to solve that problem. Uh, the only issue is I've kind of uh, thought about it a little bit more, two things really. One, this property or having a building here, I thought it seemed to obscure the actual viaduct itself quite a bit. Uh, even if you were sort of filming from here, it seemed to obscure the view of it a little bit. So my thoughts were potentially taking that away and then having some kind of yard there, um, possibly a network rail yard. So kind of one of these little uh, units that you have where you can have some vans uh, and little bits and bobs of uh, materials that they would use, cabling and things like that. And then that would mean that this I could use as a kind of a shuttered, uh, kind of bit of a lock-up storage garage for them for equipment really. Uh, which again would hide part of this and you could have some bits of bric-a-brac and stuff in there. Um, I just thought, looking at it, would that open up the view a bit and the vans and things, so say for having network rail transit vans, would give a bit of an idea of scale really, of the height of the viaduct. Um, so yeah, and you could potentially have a few small sort of porter cabins, that kind of thing, small buildings, but yeah, value your opinions really and what you think uh, about that, of getting rid of the buildings just to open up that space. What I would do then, and forgive the mess, it's very much a work in progress. It was as I would still have those buildings, but on the, on the kind of the far banks of the river. And the one to the right there, potentially have that as a mill. as a bit of an interesting, theory, uh, you know, point of interest. That actually goes down into the river effectively um, you know ex make that a bit taller and actually have the front face of it going down into the uh, to the, the, the banking of the river just a bit of a feature and then obviously have that one that's going up the hill towards higher ground so basically yeah generally it's going to be a river valley down there with the embankment coming through and then the upper level peak district line going there but I wanted to have those buildings where you can kind of see the rooftops of them and they give an idea of the trains passing by. Um, so yeah, it'd just be uh, interesting to hear what you think about that one. I just thought it opened up the view because really this, there's obviously there's going to be the Gerda Bridge here as well. Uh, for anyone who's uh, not aware, one of my scenic inspiration videos, uh, I do a bit of a recce really of a, of a place that, where there used to be a double uh, river bridge like this in Heat and Mersey. Uh, it's no longer there but there's a bit of background information on it, it's quite a unique feature. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to sort of keep that bridge as the main feature, the bridge and the river that's going to go through the middle there when I clear all of that stuff. Uh, keep that as the main feature and I thought that it just opened up that view a bit but let me know what you think. Um, just gave a few more viewing viewing potential really uh, so what i've done is i thought well if i do this as a yard and obviously this can all be changed i'd have the storage area there possibly with shutters they may be half closed and you can have some vans around here all i've done with this is i've used that polystyrene blocks because it's really easy to work with really easy to cut you can shape it nicely and then i've used some of this some nice solid thick solid cardboard and i've just cut that to shape so that just slides in there. Uh, what I wanted to do as well is I thought that gives a couple of options. So I've got now, effectively, I've got two different heights of embankment in the same scene, which gives a general impression of the landscape 
falling down from that side of the valley over there. Uh, so what I thought is that uh, that would make a nice yard area with capacity for say four or five vehicles and a load of equipment, maintenance equipment, stuff like that. You've got the option then of potentially having that as a smaller embankment there and then leading up to the overhead crossing line. But then what I thought also what you could do is if they needed more storage space, uh, I could actually use this as part embankment and then cut it down. So you've got a retaining wall or a, I don't know, a structural wall, I suppose. So that then you've got the potential of viewing trains coming up over the lower level, smaller embankment, but also as it comes up towards this bridge, a kind of a retaining wall, which might just make an interesting feature for filming them. Um, and obviously I'm just trying to think of everything I do as being as prototypical as I can and just sort of double checking whether it really makes sense as well. Um, but the benefit of this as well, I think, is what I wanted to do here is perhaps have this little corner as a field, you know, with maybe maybe a stable or something or maybe even just, just a, a field as it is. Because I thought what that does, I can just see the view from here. It just gives a little bit of uh, contrast, really, and that we can have a higher level embankment here at this point. So you're going to look up at the trains coming past there. Now, there's a couple of options there, really. I could kind of do, uh, you know, just have this as a, a, a bit of a retaining wall. But then I thought, would you realistically have the retaining wall just for a car park to keep it level? And I thought, maybe in some places, but maybe, maybe not. But then I thought, well, what I could do here is have this field sloping up. It's very rare you just get fields that are just completely flat. It's kind of, that would give the impression, anyway, of the landscape, again, just increasing as it, as it, the gradient goes up over there. So I thought a good way to do that before putting any kind of uh, traditional methods is using some of this thinner polystyrene block. Uh, I've got a little bit of a, a block there. Uh, I've cut it out to shape, and the idea was I've also I've also filed off this end, well, sawn off this end to make it a bit of a ramp so it sits flush. And then my idea was to put that one on there. So so just see if see what I'm doing. So that would be on the block at the back there, and then it's going to be fairly flush here to where this is going to be. You can't just see it, but under there that's going to be another. Uh, underbridge basically a road bridge or a road underpassing that's going to go uh, underneath the embankment but what that would do let's see if I can just show you putting it there it, in fact so it's a bit tricky to film this just with one hand I could perhaps do with a you know some kind of uh, tripod or something but what I thought is that will give a nice slope leading up to that car park and it just gives a bit of a slope feature to that embankment, which is obviously it's something that you see that a lot. You get, uh, you know, the embankments are there just to follow the, you know, that allow the trains a, a straight passage over the uh, undulating landscape. So I just thought that might be a nice feature there to have that. And obviously you'll have the train in the background. Uh, moving over to the this side, I thought this road, I wanted this to be a nice kind of flowing road that goes up under that bridge. And then this yard up here, um, I could kind of have sort of some, some retaining walls. So at least I've got a little bit there uh, or even just an embankment going down to the road. So the idea being that this probably would have been kind of half, uh, half sort of earthwork and stuff moved away and then uh, sort of slightly built up as well just to allow for a reasonably flat car park. So yeah, that's that uh, little idea. Uh, just moving on to this side. So I'm just starting to think about this side. For anyone who's not aware, basically this, this green paint is literally, it's just to show, to give us a bit of an idea. Uh, it's very rough uh, and I'm going to build this up scenery up properly with relevant scatter materials and stuff like that. But here, just for underneath the bridge, I'm going to have a pavement on one side, I think, there. But on this bit, I was thinking of potentially having some steps going up there just to add a little point of interest and then probably going up there. So you've got the, the embankment coming down here 
and then it further dropping away down here with the steps and maybe a little path there just as a bit of a scenic trail or something like that uh, and I thought that might just add a little bit of interest there with potentially a couple of trees as well just to uh, watch the trains go past uh, the, the trees to give them a bit of an idea of them sort of working their way into the actual landscape so yeah should be uh, should be interesting that really I think once it's done and I can get some trains running because you'll have the, those trains coming along and then watching them some of them slow moving uh, if you're interested in watching the progress of this layout then uh, please consider subscribing with the notification bell and you'll be kept up to date with uh, everything uh, also if you like the video I'd be grateful if you could give it a thumbs up uh, and any comments are always appreciated Really helpful that when you get uh, different suggestions. Um, this thing, when I was going to have it as a cafe and uh, potentially a cafe and a tourist information spot, uh, I've not abandoned that plan by any means. What I was thinking is it may be more suited uh, to the other scene that I'm going to do, one of them, which will be the Preservation Railway. And I want that to be kind of a bit of a, a rural uh, line, really, if I can do. So... Um, I thought that may well be uh, more more fitting for there, whereas this is a bit more of a kind of a sub suburban type scene, so not fully rural. Um, ideas as well is uh, for anyone who's not aware, there's going to be a industrial uh, town city scene where I'm still going to carry along these two different track levels, but they're going to be working their way through a very industrial scene, a very sort of city centre type scene, uh, and that's going to give the option for a lot of these type of under uh, storage units and businesses um, also uh, that will give the uh, lots of brick viaducts and different bridge structures as well as they work the way through and what they will have is a lot of buildings uh, going up uh, kind of different offices and, and different types of things like that so the trains will work the way through them and it should give a really interesting visual view that uh, the other one is going to be uh, a TMD, a DRS TMD. That's going to be one of the other uh, modules. All of the modules are this size, so the three foot by four foot. Uh, and eventually they will all link together. They're going to be designed with different endpoints so that they do, uh, they do all link together. Um, so yeah, the DRS uh, one, the city module and also the um, the preservation line as well and obviously some kind of lines just to link all of the modules together uh, but the plan is basically once I've done this module I'm going to try and complete this one to pretty much completion obviously things like this thanks very much for the tips by the way that you've provided um, about the um, you're doing something to make the stones so you actually stick on the individual stones to give it a bit more profile I do very much like that idea um, and it's something I may well do in, in the future. It's just at the moment I'm probably going to try and make a bit more progress on the overall scene um, with a view to then working out a way that I can actually get trains running on a very simple loop so I can actually run some trains across uh, on the under, under routes, the, uh, the main line and also what will be a peak forest type line on the top which is going to be mainly quarry trains. So that will be the next uh, the next job to do um, and then uh, it'll be a case of linking those all together so yeah thanks very much for uh, for watching and bearing with us on this one um, any as always any comments any suggestions you've got uh, I'll reply to all of them they're very uh, interesting um, but yeah let me know what you think about the uh, the idea the idea was this road that's going to come under here it would be quite a good place for filming that way. You can get film the the, uh, the trains going over the top, and also the uh, the slow. Well, I suppose they would be slow moving. Some of them will be slow moving at this point uh, because the next module to the left, effectively, that will go link onto this one. The lower line is going to go into a station there, and it's going to be a station probably uh, three lines going through it. You know, a passing loop uh, going with an island station platform. Uh, with the two main lines going through with the platform either side if that makes uh, sense so it's going to be it's going to be more about viewing the trains really rather than um, any any technical operation stuff here um, so I'm going to keep it fairly simple and then obviously the DRS uh, TMD and the um, 
the, the preservation line that's going to have a few more sort of shunting options and things like that uh, but yeah that's what I'm thinking for this one but uh, yeah, any thoughts? I thought I'd just give you a bring bring you back for an update uh, before I start to uh, do much more. But basically, the jobs are going to be quite simple for this. It's going to be a case of gluing this one down, uh, fixing that, fixing the hard standing there for the yard. Uh, but again, let us know what you think. If people think it's a bad idea or it looked better with buildings there, then I'll see what think about uh, considering that as well. Uh, and then obviously that'll be just building up that scenery on that aspect as well and working out what we're going to do here whether we do a retaining wall which may add an interesting feature so yeah thanks very much for watching hope you're enjoying your weekends and i will speak to you again very soon bye for now